anything better than catching the game-winning flyout? I think not. Good evening, everyone. Revenge is a dish best served cold, with some fries and a shake. Strawberry, no whipped cream, though. After losing the first game of their doubleheader to Bark River Harris, the Westwood Patriots were determined to bounce back, not only to get the win today, but their first win of the season. Jump to the sixth, game tied at six. One on one out for Shea Blewett. She makes contact here, but Paige Welch gets under it for the out. Next batter is Maddie Matias, and she sends this one right up the middle. Marissa Carello will come around third and head home as the Patriots take the one run lead. So Westwood was just three outs away from the win. To the final frame, Welch leading off for the Broncos. She goes down swinging, one of seven strikeouts for Hannah Salmi. Next up is Abby Fanziano, and this one goes deep to center field, but the senior, Destiny Bullard, gets the fly out, and the Patriots need just one more out. Brianna Molastic at the plate. She makes hard contact here, but Paige Rivard to end it. And that's the ball game. Westwood gets their first win of the season over Bark River Harris, 7-6, the final score. More softball scores, this time in the Copper Country. In game one, it was Lake Linden Hubble over Calumet, seven to five. In game two, a 10 run sixth inning pushed the Copper Kings over the lakes by a final score of 17 to eight. In baseball action, it was a complete game one hitter for Escanaba's Justin Popelka as the Eskimos shut out the Miners at home, nine nothing, the final score. Track and field action at Nagani, a quadrangular with Westwood, Houghton, and Calumet. Let's look at the final standings for the boys. In fourth was the Copper Kings, third was the Patriots, second was the Miners, and in first place were the Gremlins winning 10 of the 17 events. Let's check out the girls now. Fourth place was Westwood, third place was Calumet, second place was Nagani, and in first place, once again, were the Houghton Gremlins. Boys tennis now, Ishpeming hosting Gwyn in the number one singles. It was Lucas Sulka taking on Bradley Veal. A little too much on the return there, gives Veal the point. Later Veal on the serve, Sulka with it back. Veal sends it back, Sulka says you take it, and Veal can't send it back. However, Gwyn would win the match in three sets, 5-7, 6-4, 6-4. <laughs> to the number one doubles, Noah Wickstrom and Mason Bockert of Gwyn, Jacob Clark and Devin Kent of Ishpeming. Bockert, nice play at the net, and Kent lobs this one a little too much and out of bounds. The model towners get the point there. Switching sides, check out Clark here with the backhand shot. Wickstrom tries sending it back, but it gets the net. Ishpeming would win this match in straight sets, 6-4, 6-1. In the number two singles, the model towners Austin Forbes went head to head with the Hematite's Hart Holmgren. Forbes backing Holmgren up deep and he can't return it. Point goes to the model towners, but Holmgren would get his payback. Watch as he sets himself up in front of that and then boom, another match win for the Hematites as they get the home win over the model towners, seven to one, the final score.